Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. All right, good day to you. God bless you. Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this Family Bible Study Hour. Praise God, our Father's Word. Well, it's great now that we're through with Deuteronomy. We're, gonna, we're just going to visit today a little bit. We're going to talk about what will it be like when Christ returns. Let's see, how many signs did He give us? He told us in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 the seven events that are the seven seals. But then in other places he said other things. The day of visitation is going to be so and so. The day of the Lord will be so and so. And when you take all these signs and put them together with current events, we have a barometer then of where the times are. Where are we in God's time plan? So today we're going to talk about a couple of those times that God said that and we ask a word of wisdom from him in this, in the name of Yeshua. Now, in Luke 17, Christ, in teaching, said, Hey, it's going to be a lot like it was in Lot's day. People are going to be acting as they did in Lot's day. Well, how was that? Well, in the book of Genesis, it states, Just before Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, two angels, two men, appeared to Lot, and he took them in his dwelling. And the men of Sodom and Gomorrah came to the door asking to see those two men that they might know them. In other words, perversion. And Lot stepped outside and told them, no, not under my roof, not somebody that's under my roof for protection. And then they threatened Lot and probably would have killed him. But the angels reached out and drug Lot back through the door and then with a flash of light blinded this group, both young and old, to show you the extent of perversion there was in that day. And they left off, but the two angels instructed Lot, get out of this place, we're going to destroy it. And they did. God did. And then we have another place in Hosea, and we're going to take the scriptures from that. It's important, and I want you to understand it, where we had a like thing. And we have in Hosea chapter, first off, remember the book of Hosea. Hosea was told, you go marry a harlot. Hosea the prophet, told, instructed by God to go marry a harlot. And he did which this was all symbolic of ten tribe Israel, which would be labeled as the house of Israel, that had gone north, had gone whoring after other gods, all right, other religions. Oh, let's try this religion a while, and let's try this. There's only one God. You better always remember that. And in this book of Hosea, which in the Hebrew tongue means salvation, you can find your salvation here by keeping yourself posted also as to when that day of the Lord is. So we're going to pick it up, if we may, in chapter 9. Uh, incidentally, I might insert, we taught, this is going to be kind of a mini topic from the major topic that was taught at Passover this past week. And... There were many, many people there, and if you wish to hear more on this subject, you'll be able to get them in the Passover tapes when they're ready. Hosea chapter 9, verse 7. I deemed it necessary that our entire congregation heard this as a sign of the times. Verse 7. The days of visitation are come. In other words, this is the way it's going to be when I decide to visit in my second advent. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad. 
for the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred. The great hatred for who? For those that truly love the Father, our Father, the true Father. And then he gives us an example, verse 8. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God, but the prophet is a snare and a fowler in all his ways, and hatred in the house of his God. Right in his church, that's what he's talking about. Verse 9, here is, your, here is the reason thereof. They have deeply corrupted themselves. They have deeply depraved themselves as in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will visit, I repeat, visit their sins. Whatever it is that happened in Gibeah, God doesn't like. You had your first example in Sodom and Gomorrah by God sending the two angels. He put a stop to it. I assure you, in like circumstances, when men cannot be men, then God is very angry. And Let's, let's just go back, if we may, to Judges chapter 19. Judges chapter 19, and let's find out what happened there. We're going to, you'll remember what happened. A Levitical priest married a, a maiden, and she was unfaithful to him and, and, and left him, I suppose, for fear of reprisal when she was found out. But he was a good man and a forgiving man. He forgave her. And with a servant, took um, asses with uh, food and provisions, and he went after her from Mount Ephraim to Bethlehem, Judah. And when he arrived, he, talked, he spoke friendly to his wife. He took her back unto himself with love. And his father-in-law was just elated. His father-in-law was so happy to see this priest that forgave his daughter and all was well. He encouraged him to stay, and he stayed three days. And we're going to pick it up, if we may, with uh, verse 4, as uh, we'll initiate those three days, and let's go with it. Verse 4 of that 19th chapter, as the priest is there claiming his wife, and his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him, and he abode with him three days, so they did eat and drink and lodged there. Now, I want to make this dispensational because it is prophecy in as much as you were told by the prophet in Hosea that it would be as it was in Gippiah. So this is prophecy. The first three dispensations with the first dispensation which most people do not allow is the first earth age. Makes it cover that part or those dispensations which were without law. I repeat, without law. Verse 5. And it came to pass on the fourth day, when they arose early in the morning, that he rose up to depart, and the damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, Comfort uh, thine heart with a morsel of bread, and afterward go thy way. And, of course, this takes us to that fourth dispensation, which we consider to be under the law and up to the time of the rejection of Israel, those ten tribes written of in the book of Hosea, called there by our father, Loame, which is to say in the Hebrew tongue, not my people, but later, just past that ninth chapter in which we covered, he would call them Ami, which is to say, my people. He would visit them. He would reclaim them. Verse 6. And they sat down and did eat and drink both of them together. And for the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. He was, uh, again, you can understand this man was elated and and uh, that his daughter was taken back because it was especially difficult for a woman that was disavowed or, or uh, annulled 
in this point in history. Verse 7, And when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him, therefore he lodged there again. Evidently, they were quite fond of each other. Verse 8, And he arose early in the morning of the fifth day. Here, this would be symbolic of the fifth dispensation to depart. And the damsel's father said, Comfort thine heart. I pray thee, and they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat, both of them. And of course, the fifth dispensation is what we call the dispensation of grace. All right? Verse 9. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine and his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father, said unto him, Behold, now the day draweth toward evening, I pray ye tarry all night. Stay one more day. Behold, the day groweth to, uh, or to uh, an end. Lodge here, stay here, that thine heart may be merry, and tomorrow get ye up early on your way, that thou mayest go home. And I would caution you to remember when a day changes according to the traditions of this, the time of this writing, and still do for those that follow that method. Because it's sundown. So we're, we're on the fifth day, and we're just about to turn to the sixth, verse 10. But the man would not tarry that night, would not stay. But he rose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. And there were with him two asses saddled. His concubine also was with him. Now, Jebus, of course, was uh, inhabited at that time by the Jebusites, and it is why that God would call it uh, and declare it his bride forever in Ezekiel chapter 16, but a baby that would have, uh, have been born in an unclean birth, all right? Unswaddled, in other words, but he loved her. David would conquer, and then she would be called Yahushalem, verse 11. And when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent, and the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee. And let us turn in unto this city for the Jebusites, of the Jebusites rather, and lodge in it. Of course, these were not his people. You can get hurt when you're staying among strangers that are not of your kind or understand your ways. Uh, they were not worshipers of our God is what I'm saying. Verse 12, And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside hither into the city of a stranger. That is not of the children of Israel. We will press over to Gibeah. And here comes old Gibeah, as Christ said through the prophet. It's going to be like it was in the days of Gibeah. So here we find out what it is that especially brings, if you would, the wrath of God to a boil whereby the end is upon you. Verse 13. And he said unto his servant, Come and let us draw not near to one of these places to the to lodge all night in Gibeah or in Ramah, and Ramah being hill, of course, 14. And they passed on and went their way. And the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin. So here we are located, we're situate in the, among the tribe of Benjamin. The sun has just gone down, and as I've Four stated, we're in the sixth day. What is the sixth dispensation? It covers from the beginning, if you would, of the deception on through Antichrist and right up through to the destruction of Antichrist, which is to say Satan's work upon this earth in and among the brethren. Verse 50, so um, theoretically speaking, we're in and approaching just before the time of Antichrist as we continue the scriptures. This is the sign that Christ wanted you to know that as it was in Gibeah, so it would be for you in this generation. Verse 15, 
And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat down in the street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to, lie, uh, to lodging. Very unfriendly. Not hospitable at all. Because it was quite common that, well, as Christ would say in a parable, if you go, a parable rather, if you go into a city and you're not well received in a house, kick the dust off your feet and move on. But he chose to sit in the street waiting. Verse 16. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which was also of Mount Ephraim. And he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. In other words, this man, this old man that came in from the field, even he was of the same house, Ephraim, of which this Levite was a priest and visiting in this land. Verse 17. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou? And whence comest thou? Verse 18. And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim. From thence am I. I went, and I went to, to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord, and there is no man that receiveth me to house. No one has invited me in. There is a great deal within that. Where was Christ born? Bethlehem. What does Bethlehem mean in the Hebrew tongue? House of bread. And the fact that it was in Judah's area, and it is a Levite priest that this woman, which will be symbolic of Israel before this is over, that we see all this geographical location covered, spanning the historical geographical location of both Christ, of the two tribes of which he was born, the son of the living God, and so forth. That is to say, with Mary's mother being a daughter of Aaron, sister to Elizabeth, who was a full-blood uh, Levite, and Mary's father, whose genealogy given in Luke chapter 3, puts him of Judah. So Bethlehem Judah and the Levitical priesthood. Verse 19. Yet there is both straw and pavenda on our, for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me, and for thy handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no one of anything. Hey, We've got everything we need. We'll do just fine. We won't be any, any cost to you. Verse 20, And the old man said, Peace be with thee. How, howsoever, let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. In other words, it's obvious this old fellow knows it's not safe out there in the streets. How about our streets, beloved? What would happen to you if you lodged out in the streets of one of our cities. You're familiar with what just happened in Florida. And we're just coming through Passover 93, so, that, that to, so you understand the dates. The unrest, how little value there is on life in certain places. And even our governmental approach and opinions in many directions. Verse 21. So he brought him into his house and gave provenda unto the asses, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. He's safe inside this man's home, and he's being cared for. Verse 22. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, this means worthless fellows, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. Now these bunch of turkeys don't want to know the concubine that came with the man, they want the man. Man working that with man, which is unseemly and is, is um, 
totally unnatural, and God hates it. That's why Jesus would say, as it happened to Lot, the perversion. And that's why that he would say to this same prophet Hosea, as it was in the days of Gibeah, this is what makes me angry. Verse 23. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to mine house. Do not this folly. Verse 24, Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine, them I will bring out. And humble ye then, and do with them what seemeth good unto you, but unto this man do no so vile a thing. We come to that place in history so that we look around us and we check the temperature of the water. It was perversion that brought about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was perversion at Gibeah that caused the nation of Benjamin to be reduced next to nothing. And Christ said, your current events are going to be exactly as it was in Gibeah when I return. And you have a president of this nation that is trying to force perversion upon the armed forces, the defense of this very nation and your freedom as Christians, a Christian founded nation from the beginning, easily documented from the actions of the Supreme Court of this nation from its conception and beginning. Now, well, do you hate perverts? No, I, I love all of God's children. But I am a teacher of God's word and the warning is true and the warning is stern. You have reached that place, my friends. The perversion and the danger in our streets has reached the point that you fathers and mothers had better learn to protect your own homes. You had better learn what hour we're in. God doesn't like it. And you're beginning to see the plagues that God promised he would send when this perversion came to this point. And practicing that that is filth, it brings death. I do not like to see my brothers choose death, but it's their choice. I would not interfere with their choice. I have shed blood for this nation, that everyone would have freedom, freedom to do what they wanted to do. But don't try to force anything upon a people that love Christ, that serve Christ, or God's wrath has not been released in any quantity yet, regardless of AIDS. You haven't seen, regardless of the World Trade Building, the first terrorist, terrorist act on our nation brought on by a leader, a commander-in-chief that pushes perversion, that was raised a Christian and has turned his back, regardless of what tests the fruit by its tree. Well, he attends church every Sunday. Oh, does he test the fruit? Perversion. God is is angry and you are reaching that time reaching that time that God's wrath will be released as never before in 2,000 years what happened from this point on they sent out the concubine and and his maiden daughter. I cannot say that I understand that, but they did. And they abused them all night long, these worthless skunks, sons of Bilal. And his 
wife drug herself to the threshold and died there early in the morning, abused and used. The priest carried his wife, her corpse on the ass, took her home. And because of this filth in Israel, symbolically, he cut her into 12 pieces. Yes, this is graphic. And he sent one twelfth to each of the tribes, including Benjamin, with word of what happened in Gibeah. Symbolic of the many-membered body, even if you would, in these end times and the perversion that is being pressed upon it. It won't fly, my friends. We will not tolerate it. God, the fact that we won't tolerate it is not as important as the fact God will not tolerate it. You haven't seen anything yet. Your so-called commander-in-chief is bringing the wrath of God down on this free nation. Now, what happened after that? When the nations received of the house of Israel, and when you check out the migrations of those ten tribes, they're here. A part of all of them makes up this superpower of superpowers in the end times. That's very easily documented. The tribes gathered and they were very angry that we had reached such a point of degradation. And they attacked. They asked Benjamin, give over those men of Belial to us that we may kill them. Of course, Benjamin refused. He was apparently quite satisfied with this situation. And Israel was so unhappy with this that they didn't even return home before the battle, before the so-called cleansing. They sent one out of every ten to, to um, acquire supplies. And then they went to God and said, which one of us will go first? And God said, hey, send Judah. There's a great lesson to be learned in this, so listen carefully. Send Judah. Benjamin mustered 26,000 men approximately. Israel had 400,000 men. And in the first day of the battle, Israel lost 25,000 men. They got kicked all over the place. And in the second battle, which did not necessarily follow on the second day, in the second battle, they went to the house of God and asked him, shall we attack our brother? Now, I understand the word brother is very important in this. When you attack your brother, it's a very serious thing. God says, yeah, go, go ahead. And they lost 18,000 men that day. They got stomped. Do you know why? They all pointed their fingers at the perverts. And as law, they should die. They were, you know, we're going to carry out God's word. But they did not take care of their own sins first. They didn't ask God, pray about this, and have a man of God intervene and find out if God wanted them to go, they knew the answer would be yes, because it's the law, yes. But they didn't clean up their own house first. And it's real sad when it, we talk about at this season of Easter where we have people rolling Easter eggs in their house of God. And rolling eggs is not in God's word. That's a heathenistic, pagan, orgy, a ritual of fertility, the egg. 
and quick like a bunny, the bunny rabbit. There needs to be a lot of cleaning up, my friend, in our personal lives. We need to take inventory. We need to repent as a people and then pray to God, and I insist that you do that this day. Pray to God that he handle the situation from top all the way to bottom, and I assure you he will. Remember what's happening in your Congress even at this time. As hearings are, who would have ever believed that in the United States of America that our noble leaders outstanding citizens would be holding a committee on, with, on perversion, whether it would be allowed or not. That is so, it is so, uh, it, is, it brings such a degradation upon our nation that it's hard to even realize that grown, educated men would bring themselves to meet in a chamber and discuss allowing perversion that makes God angry into the defense of this nation. It's an abomination. And don't you forget it. And you keep those letters going. I don't care which side of the picture you're on, whether you're for it or against it. You better make your voice heard because you've only seen the beginning. It is sad that there will be many hurt because of this. Physically, already it has begun. People are sick of it and tired of it. No more. God is angry. I'm sure he's disappointed and I'm sure the tears are falling for this great nation. Again, it's easy to point fingers. The whole house needs to be cleansed. You see, what happened at the third conflict? Men, women, and children went weeping to the house of God and repented and offered offerings and to God of their love, asking forgiveness, humbled themselves before Him and told Him of their love. And then God said, Tomorrow I will go before you. He did, and Benjamin suffered a defeat that almost destroyed the tribe of Benjamin. The other brothers had to allow men to take his daughters to even build Benjamin back up again. But it got a good cleansing. Our nation needs a cleansing. We have certain trouble spots that need cleansing. So pray about it. And you, of God's own, Cleanse your house. God is with you. And protect your own home. Protect your children. Protect your family. Protect your wife. And protect yourselves. There are many single families. God loves you. He will protect you also. As long as you will make that step to learn to protect yourself. I would say at the same time, Never handle something you are not experienced at. Grow very experienced and very comfortable with whatever security systems you have in your home whereby you are very efficient with it. Then you don't have to worry. God will do the rest. He'll take care of you. What is the moral to this? Clean up your own act. Start here. Repent. And pray for this terrible situation that our nation is in with such leaders. We've got a lot of good leaders. But we have a lot, we have some leaders that I, I really, I have to struggle to understand how a grown adult person, one 
that is even trained in the Word of God, this I know for a fact, that would turn his back on God and snuff his nose to bring perversion into the military, it's like he's threatening God. So don't worry, God will respond. Our nation will be better off for it. Start at home. Don't point the finger, sin is sin, but repent and pray that our Father intercedes. Don't worry, He will, He shall. As it was in the days of Gibeah, what does it mean? We're very near the end, my friends. Don't look at the year 2000. That really isn't even a sign, unless you want to go by the day theory. There is those things that are present in current events that let you know He's knocking on the door. And I'll tell you what, if I were you, I would really search my soul. What I have said is not to offend, to belittle, or to degrade any child of God. But some of your practices are not good. And death has carried many away. A word to the wise is usually sufficient, and it is stopped. God's trying to get some people's attention. He has many of you, and I know that, and I love you for it. It's time for a change. It's time for our Father to return very soon through the Son. I just wonder if you're ready. Think about it. He loves you. Don't forget to let him know that you love him and pray for God's children everywhere of all nations. All right, we're going to stop there. This is just a little clip from the tapes that will be available from Passover. What a Passover it was. We had a wonderful time. But, and they're not ready yet, but they will be soon. All right, bless your hearts. I want you to listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. First chapter of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I knew you before you ever entered your mother's womb. In other words, the first earth age, he was with him. And while you were in your mother's womb, I made you a prophet. See, he knew he had the right stuff because he knew him from before. The generation of the fig tree, are we living in it, in it um, counted as the days of men or the days of uh, God? They're days of men, a generation, okay? Uh, that means the generation of the fig tree from 1948 to whenever that generation ends. But that means soon. And um, thank you. I appreciate your comment. Valerie from Nevada, please explain the four horsemen that is talked about in the Bible. Also, uh, one of the horsemen or one of the horsemen here on earth today. No, is there not? The first horseman, as you will read in Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, is the Antichrist. Why is he the first? Because for the Christian, it's most important that you know the Antichrist comes first. The, the, 
Jesus Christ himself, it's all the way to the 19th chapter when that white horse which he rides comes in. But naturally, Satan's a fake. And he is one of the first seals. That's one of the first things you have to learn. Then comes famine, war, and so forth. It all falls in place. But that first horseman, the Antichrist, it's important that you know he comes first. He even appears to have this rainbow about him, only the word in the Greek is toxon, and it means a cheap fabric imitation. He's a fraud. Sue from Nevada, I have heard some people say the 10 tribes and some say the 12 tribes. Would you explain? Well, the, there were 12 tribes. As we were studying, God took the 12 tribes and put 12 curses before them if they didn't get their act right. But the, the history is that the 10 northern tribes were taken captive by the Assyrian. And the Assyrian taking those 10 tribes captive took them north. They would later ultimately go over the Caucasus Mountains called Caucasian, settling Europe. Where did, where did they come from? Those 10 tribes. God promised they would become as numerous as the sands of the sea and stars of heaven. Where are they today? Right here. They went over. They were called Caucasians. They settled uh, Europe and, and uh, Canada, the Americas, and God blesses them. Why? They're his tribes. They're the people that carry forth the Messiah, the teachings of the Messiah. The other two remained until they were taken captive 200 years later, I repeat, 200 years later, by the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And so it is. But there are 12 tribes. Sherry from Nevada, thank you for preaching and teaching God's word. You're welcome. I value the truth that you speak. This is why I am coming to you for guidance. I do not currently attend a church, but I wish to pay tithes. How do I know where to pay tithes to or their rules? It's, it's real simple where you're taught, okay? Because, well, why would you pay tithes where you're taught? To keep the word coming to you, to, to keep the teachings coming to you. That's just, if, if no one tithes to where they were taught, then that would dry that ministry up. So, naturally, it is well that you can give love offerings to anybody you choose, but you always tithe where you're taught. Uh, Noel from Pennsylvania, would you be would should we be worried about uh, 12, 21, 2012? Absolutely not. Christians don't have to worry about anything. God blesses us. He gives us life, and He's going to let the end come. It won't be by that Mayan calendar necessarily. It'll be when our Father wishes it to be, and that makes us happy. We're, we're ready, and <clears throat> we'll keep plowing until that day comes. Uh, Jaira from Tennessee. What chapter and verse does it talk about the churches of Smyrna and Philadelphia? I was confronted by a person who insisted their religion was the only religion going to heaven. Well, unfortunately, you have more than one that teaches that, and that's false. You know, uh, St. John chapter 3, I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 3, verse 16 says, God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten Son that whomsoever would believe upon him should not perish but have eternal life. That means go to heaven. It, 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 he didn't mention any specific church there. He said, whomsoever. So a church is a job of teaching, but an individual decides whether they go to heaven or not. You know why? Today's lecture is really a good one to nail that home. It's according to whether, regardless of what church the person attends, whether they choose life or death. Okay, It's up to the individual. Smyrna and Philadelphia were the only two churches out of seven that taught truth that Christ was pleased with. You will find Smyrna in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. <clears throat> Excuse me, in Philadelphia in chapter 3, verse 9. That'll make it kind of easy for you. 
But the, what, the important thing is, is what did those two churches teach that was alike and that pleased Christ? They taught who the Kenites were that claimed to be of our brother Judah and are the synagogue of Satan. Okay. It's important for you to know Satan's children because that's where Satan will appear as false Christ. And what is taught, naturally the key of David. And when you have the key of David, that's the genealogy of the true Messiah. The fake's not going to deceive you. Bob from Massachusetts. Pastor Murray, do you think the Kenites are African Americans? Absolutely not. No. The African Americans, the Africans were created on the sixth day with all the races. And God looked and it was good. The Kenites um, were... Uh, cursed coming out from, from beginning. As we know in their genealogy, how unhappy God was with them, the first murderer. And he tells you who their father was in St. John chapter 8, verse 44. Bobby from Texas, I would like information on the first earth age and how to obtain it. Well, you can dig it out of the Bible yourself if you have one of our companion Bibles, Appendix 146, the, from the foundations of the world. That, that will help you. But I have a tape titled, or a, a, a CD titled, um, The Three Earth Ages. And if you want uh, my help with it, you would order naturally that particular tape or CD. And it would document from the Word of God the three earth ages. You see, there is no conflict between science and God's word about how old this earth is. It's millions of years old. What does Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 say? In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, period. It did not say when. In verse 2, the Hebrew is tuhu vaboho, which is to say, the earth was not created void without form, but the earth became void and without form. Why? Satan rebelled and God destroyed the first earth age rather than destroying a third of his children. And uh, that's why it's so very important. It takes the blinders off of the Christian and lets you understand better the word of God to know. This is why it's written in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, teachings of Christ through Paul, I chose you before the foundations of this world, meaning the, the aeon, the time, age, first earth age in other words. Uh, Sarah from Arizona, where in the Bible can I find the Antichrist and what to look for? Well, you can find him in Matthew 24 in Mark 13 and in Luke 21, where Christ says, not maybe the false Christ will come, but the false Christ will come. And, uh, and certainly what you're supposed to do against it. Also, the false Christ, if you know the, understand the book of Revelation, in 13, 18, his number is 666, meaning he appears at the sixth seal, the sixth trump, and the sixth vial. That's 666. Well, how can I be sure of that? Well, read the sixth seal. It's the appearance of Antichrist. Read the sixth trump, the appearance of Antichrist. Sixth vial, appearance of Antichrist. 777 is the true Christ. Six always comes before seven. A child can understand that. Diane from Iowa, I have a daughter that won't have anything to do with me because her minister told her not to. Is that right? Also, is there a sign from Revelations what it says, mother against daughter and father against son? Well, it's not Revelations, darling. It's, it's Mark 13 and Matthew 24. I just stated it from. Um, I am so sorry that a minister would tell a daughter not to have anything to do with the mother. I've got a feeling that probably because you study with me, that he, you know why he asked her not to talk to you? Because he knows that truth would bring her out of his bullpit, probably. I'm not judging him. I don't know anything about his church. I don't have to judge him when he tells a daughter not to talk to her mother. If he was a true Christian, 
he would have told his daughter to try to convert her mother. That's the way of Christians. That's the mark of a Christian. But to annihilate and to forbid is a cult. So just live the life, be strong, and let and and ask for the blessings of God. And your daughter, your daughter will soon see through this man. Uh, sounds like she's listening to a man instead of God in the first place. But be that as it may, it sounds like a bad one. A cult will deny people the right to listen and be open. And um, a true Christian would tell the daughter, as I stated, to, to teach the mother the truth as they would see it. Kevin from North Carolina, is it possible if a woman own, owes you money that she is going to heaven or does she need to rectify it by paying the money back? Everybody's got to be responsible, but I'm not going to judge whether the woman goes to heaven or hell or whatever, okay? That's God's business, not ours. But uh, Kevin, you should learn one thing. Don't learn loan her any more money, okay? until she returns what has been taken, um, but, uh, and so forth. G Geraldine from, from, I don't know where they, probably Alabama, I'm gonna say. Are there any female angels? Well, darling, all, all women are angels. All females are angels, okay? And um, there, there are definitely, as, as it is written in, um, in the New Testament, I'll pull from there, that they do not give nor do they take in marriage because they are all as the angels, both male and female. You see, there are three different bodies, and this is not taught rarely ever, but there was a body in the first earth age, there is a body in this earth age, and there is a body in the eternal earth age. And uh, they, the flesh body will be a thing of the past. But the flesh body looks exactly as we do in the spiritual body. But uh, they neither give nor take in marriage in the eternal body because there's something far greater and far better. And God never takes anything away. He doesn't give something a lot better. Trinity from California. Do you... Do you have a running catalog of the different tapes and books of the Bible that are available? Thank you, yes. Call and request a mailing list, or uh, if you've never had the Mark of the Beast, a free tape, order it, and one will be, a tape catalog would be sent to you. We have all the entire Bible on tape or CD or DVD. And uh, it's, uh, or you can listen as we teach it, and it's all yours. Louise from Florida. Why do bad things happen when you are doing things right? Well, because Satan and his evil spirits, are, their spirits can traverse this earth if you allow it. But, you know, as it is written in Luke chapter 10, verses 19, Christ gave you power over all enemies, evil spirits, scorpions, the whole smack. So in his name, don't put up with it. Okay. Now, at the same time, God doesn't expect us to be a hothouse lily. Okay. We live in a world that is troubled. And you've got to educate yourself how to take care of trouble and that that you can't take care of, God will take care of it for you. But he will expect you to take care of that that you can handle. And, but you've got to do it by using the power that God invest, has invested in you. Again, Luke 10, um, uh, verse, uh, start reading about verse 18. I'll be helped Satan fall as a star from heaven because his spirits are here. Donald, but he's coming physically when Michael boots him out, but evil spirits are here now. For every negative, there's a positive. We have the Holy Spirit here and we have evil spirits. We have power over all of our enemies, including evil spirits. Donald from Oklahoma. Where did Jesus go during his three days in the tomb? 
you want to read from the Bible itself to find out. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. He went back all, to all the people that were in paradise that had died all the way back to the beginning and gave them the opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ after the price was paid on the cross. Why? Because our Heavenly Father is fair to all His children. He treats them the same. And when you continue reading on into the fourth chapter of um, 1 Peter, you'll find he was very successful. He freed many of the captives. Uh, Sid from Washington, question, if the government takes 30% of my earnings and God requires 10%, does that mean the government thinks they are bigger than God? Maybe you've got something there. I think maybe you have a lot there. You know, in the beginning, the church was the government, and 10% took care of widows, Social Security, the whole smash. And now, we kind of get ripped a little bit, but we also have to remember God. Thank, thanks, Sid. Uh, good comment. Uh, Sylvia from, no, Sonia from uh, Maryland, or Missouri, I guess, Missouri. Question, pertain to the end time and when that will be. You mentioned the season and this generation. Do you mean my generation? I'm 48 years old. The generation of the fig tree was set in motion in the year of our Lord, 1948, when Israel became a nation again, as so recorded in Jeremiah chapter 24, and I am out of time. Hey, you know what? I love you all because you enjoy studying God's Word. But most of all, God loves you for it. It's the letter He sent to you. And it makes his day when you study that word. You make his day, boy, is he going to make yours. We're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless him again. He'll always bless you. Most important, though, you listen to me good. You stay in his word every day. In his word is a good day, even with trouble. Do you know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, he is the living word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.